When you step onto a professional drag strip or racing track, one of the first things you'll notice is how sticky the surface feels under your shoes. In fact, some people compare it to walking on flypaper. Your feet almost peel off the ground with every step, and if you're not careful, you might even lose your shoe to the track. This unique stickiness is not an accident. It's one of the key factors that makes racing possible at extremely high speeds. But what exactly makes these tracks so sticky? And why do race organizers go to great lengths to create and maintain this unusual surface? The answer lies in the chemistry of traction, the need for maximum grip, and the extreme forces at play in professional racing. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the most obvious reason, traction. In motorsports, traction is everything. Traction is simply the friction between the tires and the racing surface, and it determines how well a car can accelerate, brake, and corner. If a car doesn't have enough traction, it will slide, spin, or waste power in tire smoke instead of moving forward. In drag racing especially, where vehicles can accelerate from zero to over 300 miles per hour in just a few seconds, every ounce of traction counts. Without a sticky track surface, the incredible horsepower of dragsters and race cars would be almost impossible to control, and all that power would go to waste in tire spin. So how do tracks achieve this stickiness? The secret ingredient is something called track compound or traction compound. This is a specially formulated resin, most commonly known by its brand name, PJ-1 TrackBite. Originally developed in the 1970s for NASA's space program to help tires grip the surface of test tracks, it eventually found its way into motorsports. Today, it is sprayed or applied directly onto the racing lanes to create an adhesive layer between the rubber tires and the asphalt. When combined with the heat generated by tires and the rubber that builds up on the surface, this compound becomes incredibly sticky, almost like glue. The process doesn't stop there. Race officials and track crews spend hours preparing the surface before events. They use machines known as tire rotators, or simply racing cars themselves to drag tires across the compound-coated surface. This step lays down a layer of hot, melted rubber from the tires into the track, which reacts with the compound to create a grippy, tacky surface. Over time, as more rubber builds up, the stickiness increases. That's why the starting line of a drag strip is often the stickiest part. You'll literally hear a ripping sound when you try to walk on it, because that's where the most rubber and traction compound have been worked in. But why is stickiness so important compared to a normal road surface? On a street, too much stickiness would actually be dangerous. Imagine driving on a road where your tires almost glued themselves down. It would make turns unpredictable and create uneven wear. But in racing, stickiness is exactly what drivers need to control enormous horsepower. For example, in top fuel drag racing, a car can produce over 11,000 horsepower. If the track were like a normal street, those tires would just spin uncontrollably and the car wouldn't move forward efficiently. The sticky surface allows the car to hook up with the ground translating raw engine power into forward momentum instead of wasted smoke. Interestingly, the stickiness of a racetrack changes throughout the event. Early in the day, the surface may feel tacky but not overly grippy. As more cars race, more rubber is deposited and the heat of the day activates the traction compound further. That's why drivers and teams constantly adjust their setups, because the grip level of the track is never static. A track that feels sticky and perfect at one moment 
may become too slick if the compound overheats or if rain washes it away. This constant change makes track preparation a science in itself, with crews testing and reapplying compound throughout an event to maintain the ideal level of grip. Now you might be wondering, if the track is so sticky, why don't the cars just get stuck or slowed down? The answer lies in physics. While the track compound is sticky, it isn't strong enough to hold down thousands of pounds of force when the tires are spinning at incredible speeds. Instead, it creates just enough resistance to maximize the tire's grip without actually gluing it in place. The high temperatures generated by the tires soften both the rubber and the compound, creating a chemical bond that helps the car launch harder and faster. Once the car is moving, the combination of downforce, speed, and tire design takes over to keep the vehicle planted. Another fascinating aspect is how different types of racing use track stickiness in unique ways. In drag racing, the stickiness is extremely concentrated at the starting line because that's where maximum acceleration happens. In contrast, Oval tracks or road courses may use compounds in specific turns to increase grip, making it easier for cars to hold their lines at high speeds. NASCAR, for example, has experimented with applying PJ1 in certain corners to promote side-by-side -side racing and reduce accidents. The philosophy is the same. More grip equals more control, and more control makes for faster, safer, and more exciting racing. In the end, the sticky surface of a racetrack is one of those hidden details that makes motorsports possible. To the casual fan, it might seem like an odd quirk. Why is the ground so sticky? But to drivers and teams, it's the difference between winning and losing between setting records and spinning out. The science of traction compounds, rubber buildup and surface preparation is just as important as the engines and aerodynamics of the cars themselves. So the next time you watch a race and see a car launch down the strip at impossible speeds, remember, it's not just the horsepower making it happen. It's also the glue-like magic of a sticky racetrack beneath their tires. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.